Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 4th of March. Moody's raises India's 2024 GDP forecast sharply. Jay Shankar takes dig at Maldives amid big bully claims. And Shehbaz Sharif elected PM again, Pakistanis say will not make a difference. And offer all the details, the US-based Moody's Investor Service sharply raised its GDP forecast for India on Monday following the strong momentum seen in the South Asian economy in recent quarters, which the rating agency expects will continue into 2024. India's economy grew at its fastest pace in one and a half years in the final three months of 2023, led by strong manufacturing and construction activity, posting growth of 8.4%, which was faster than 6.6% estimated by economists. Robust goods and services tax collections, Rising auto sales, consumer optimism and double-digit credit growth suggest urban consumption, demand remains resilient. The rating agency said, adding that India is likely to remain the fastest growing among G20 economies over its forecast horizon. The ratings agency said it expects policy continuity after the general election due by May and a continued focus on infrastructure development. And in a sarcastic attack on Maldives President Mohamed Muizu, India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Sunday said that big bullies don't provide $4.5 billion aid when neighbouring countries are in distress. Jay Shankar's remark came after Muizu, in an indirect reference to India, said that no country had the licence to bully Maldives, even though it is a tiny nation. Speaking at an event, Jay Shankar stressed big bullies don't supply vaccines to other countries when COVID-19 is on or make exceptions to their own rules to respond to food, fuel, fertilizer demands because some war in some other part of the world has complicated their lives. Relations between the two neighbours have deteriorated ever since President Muizu rode to power on anti-India posturing. Muizu, widely seen as pro-China leader in his first presidential speech, had said the first group of Indian military personnel will be sent back from the Maldives before March 10 and the remaining Manning 2 aviation platforms will be withdrawn before 10th of May. Moving on, Pakistan's newly formed National Assembly on Sunday elected Shehbaz Sharif as Prime Minister for a second time, three weeks after uncertain national elections caused delays in the formation of government. Defeating Omar Ayub, the candidate backed by jailed former Prime Minister Imran Khan, Sharif returns to the role he held until August by forming a minority coalition government with Pakistan's People's Party. His election to the top office was met with loud protest from Sunni Ittihad Council backed by Khan. The lawmakers called for Khan's release and shouted slogans alleging Sharif had come to power through electoral rigging. While the new government will have to grapple with ongoing challenges from Khan supporters, it will also have to immediately start talks with the IMF for the next agreement to shore up the country's economy, whilst also dealing with growing discontent over deepening poverty. However, Pakistanis are not hopeful of the new government. Shabazz Sharif Sahib was elected. Shabazz Sharif Sahib was elected in the early days, but the purpose of the purpose جو مین مقصد ہے وزیراعظم کا کہ پاکستان کی عوام خوشحال رہے وزیراعظم صاحب سے صرف یہ گزارش کروں گا کہ دن با دن جو مہنگائی بڑھتی چلی جائے جاری ہے اس پر کنٹرول کیا جائے بجلی مہنگی ہو رہی ہے الیکٹ آج ہوئے ہیں لیکن پانچ دن پہلے سے آواز آگئی پیٹرول پانچ روپے سات روپے بڑھ رہا ہے تو وزیراعظم صاحب کو چاہیے کہ ان چیزوں کو کنٹرول کرے منسٹر جالی ووٹو والے بند تو گئے ہیں لیکن مج پاکستان کے کچھ حالات ٹھیک ہوں کیونکہ مزید خراب ہو رہے ہیں مگائی نے اس طرح ستا دی ہے عام بندے کی جان نکال دی ہے بجلی مہنگی کر دی ہے گیس مہنگی ہو گئی ہے ٹرانسپورٹ مہنگی ہے تو آپ کیا کر سکے ہیں مجھے نہیں لگتا کہ یہ وزیریاں کوئی حالات ٹھیک کر سکے 
Meanwhile, exiled POK activist Amjad Ayub Mirza has lashed out at Seba Sharif calling his speech a pack of lies after he rigged up the Kashmir issue comparing it to Palestine. Exiled activist from POK, Amjad Ayub Mirza, on Sunday called out Pakistan's new Prime Minister, Shehba Sharif, over raking up the Kashmir issue in his victory speech, saying he spouted lies. Mirza said that Sharif has no guts to acknowledge and own up to the humanitarian crisis in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. He said nobody goes to sleep empty stomach in Indian Kashmir, unlike POK, where people are starving due to wheat shortage. He also flagged concern over Islamabad's negligent attitude towards improving infrastructure in POK, which has suffered for over 70 years now. He did not have the guts to say a word about the electricity boycott campaign that has uh, been going on from August last year. He did not mention <clears throat> anything for development or for providing wheat and flour to the people of Gilgit Baltistan, not even as lip service. There has been growing unrest in POK and Gilgit Baltistan in recent months with people angry over issues like load shedding, unfair taxes and wheat crisis. But Islamabad has continued to ignore their plight. And almost a year after its formation, the coalition between PM Pushpa Kamal Dehel's Mayur Center and Sher Bahadur Doeba led Nepali Congress has collapsed in the Himalayan country, leading to former allies Mayur Center and CPN UML forming a new alliance. In a post on Facebook, Vice Chairman of CPN UML Surendra Pandey said the government will change on Monday with the formation of a new cabinet. The Left Alliance Coalition will be amalgamation of Mayur Center, CPN UML, the Rashtriya Swatantra Party and the Janta Samajwadi Party. Officials have confirmed that while Dehel will continue to hold the Prime Minister's post, ministers will be inducted as recommended by the parties in the new coalition. The latest reshuffle comes just a year after Dehel ditched the support of CPN UML and forged an alliance with Nepali Congress. However, in past few months, a rift occurred between the two parties over the claim for chairmanship of the National Assembly, which broke the fragile ruling coalition. Nobel laureate Mohammad Yunus was granted bail by a Bangladeshi court on Sunday in a $2.3 million embezzlement case. Yunus, who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2006 for being the first to utilize microcredit to aid the underprivileged, was given a six-month prison sentence in January on an unrelated allegation of breaking labor regulations. He has appealed after receiving bail in that instance as well. The allegation of theft concerns a workers' welfare fund for Grameen Telecom, which holds 34.2% of the nation's largest mobile phone firm. More than 170 world leaders and Nobel laureates had pleaded the Bangladesh PM Sheikh Hasina to put a halt to legal actions against Yunus last year. According to his admirers, he has been singled out due to his chilly relationship with Hasina. The accusations have been refuted by the government. Running India's first gender-inclusive library, Priya Babu, a transgender woman from southern Madurai city, said on Sunday, that it is crucial to provide accessible education to non-binary persons. The library was established in 2016 as part of the Transgender Resource Centre to keep records of research documents and papers written exclusively for the transgender population. The centre also organises study materials for transgender students who have dropped out of college due to societal barriers but wish to continue their studies. So, so this is the trans library. In India, there is a library in India. There is a library in India. There is a paper clippings. There is a court. There is a research documentation. India has about 2 million transgender people according to the 2011 census. Despite 2014 Supreme Court ruling that transgender people have equal rights under the law, they are often shunned in society. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.